full committee Celebrate commission. The end of hockey Good evening and <laughs> welcome to the uh, monthly meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. Let me start by asking everybody to stand. The pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Well, good evening, everybody, and uh, let me introduce our commissioners tonight for the uh, audience watching on TV. To my far right, we have Bob Ladd representing the Hampton Beach Village District, Fran McMahon representing the Rockingham Planning Commission, Bill Watson representing New Hampshire. John Nyan representing the town of Hampton, and Marshawn, our secretary, Chuck Rage representing the Hampton Beach Village District, Mike Hausman representing the State Parks Dread, Bob Preston representing the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce, Dean Merrill, our commissioner at large, Rick Griffin representing the town of Hampton, and we have Jason Bashan, the town planner. Uh, we do not have anybody here tonight for public comment, so we'll just move along, and we also have no appointments. One of the appointments that I'm continuing to try to set up. Whoa. Right? It's just, I think it just slides down every once in a while. Okay. <laughs> uh, watch it. <laughs> one of the appointments that I was trying to, uh, to set up that I'm continuing to try is just to get people all together rather than piecemeal our uh, state senator and our reps, so I will continue working on that. Um, let's go to the review and approval of the minutes of February 2nd. Page 1. Page 2. Page 6, <clears throat> page 7, hearing no edits or changes, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of February 2nd. I'll make that motion. Mr. Griffin made the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Second. Merrill had a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. I might also add, um, and I'll, I'll get to it in a minute, but there were additional minutes that Jason had written up for us for a special meeting that we had on the 14th, which I failed to send out, but I will send out uh, to the commissioners, and we will uh, review and approve at the uh, the next meeting. Treasurer's report, Michael, anything? Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so in the... In Last month, a $366 invoice was paid out of the account for secretarial services, leaving a balance of $9,628.43. Any questions for Michael? Hearing none, do I have a, a motion to accept the treasurer's report? Mr. Griffin made a motion. Mr. Rage made a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Transportation grant discussion. Um, I have been uh, going back and forth with William Rose over this past month, um, and uh, we were hoping that he and VHB would be able to come tonight to give us a uh, an updated report. However, um, he has an injury, um, and also, um, as important, um, they are just finishing up negotiations uh, with regard to task order three, which is the engineering design phase of our transportation grant. Um, they feel very confident that they will be able to get that report out to me in the next day or two, um, which I will then send to you all uh, for review and comment. Uh, it will be uh, a narrative of what the task order three will be and also a, a time or a budget report with regard to the uh, what is being proposed as the expenditure of task order three. Um, I'm going to send that out as an email and ask for everybody's comments so that I could get it back to William so that he could finalize the uh, agreement 
with VHB for phase two. Um, we are anxious to get this phase two started with the hope and intent that we will have everything completed by the end uh, of this year in terms of what we um, have selected in terms of different alternatives within the transportation grant and also the cost associated with it. It's my understanding that the report that they will be working on will be addressing different alternatives that we all talked about at the end of last year and the cost associated to each of those alternatives so that for example if we uh, looked at Ocean Boulevard South uh, with parking uh, keeping the 66 spaces um, it would cost X amount of dollars if we take those 66 spaces out it would cost Y amount so we'll be looking at different alternatives and cost associated to those alternatives mm -hmm. so that we will then be able to come up with a final recommendation of which uh, which we should which way we should go uh, Mr. Watson anything you want to add to that? Oh, I think you got it very well. Okay, thank you Old business um, still talking with um, Chief Sawyer about our partnership uh, with the uh, uh, the, um, the rail gates, if you will. Um, he wanted to wait until after the town elections because I believe that there was a, a warrant article or two or a budget that he had money that he had set aside to purchase some of those guardrails uh, but wasn't sure how much money would be approved and therefore how many guardrails he could buy. So um, I'm sure that before the April meeting will have more of a definite uh, idea of what he would like the Beach Commission to consider as part of his partnership going into the summer of uh, 2017. Um, as I mentioned, we did have a special meeting on February 14th to discuss House Bill 302. Um, I believe everybody was present either in person or by phone. Um, and we all know the outcome that that uh, there was a motion made at that uh, at that meeting uh, to support House Bill 302 and that vote was taken and it was not passed by a vote of 171 one in favor seven against and one abst abstention uh, since then as you all know because I copied you all on it we sent a letter to the uh, uh, chairman of the House Committee that was um, that had this on their committee agenda uh, indicating our vote uh, and also indicating that at this time the Beach Commission was not supporting House Bill 302 um, he replied back to thank us for our involvement and thanked us for our quick response um, and from what I've gathered um, reading the news up in Concord uh, that House bill was killed in uh, in committee. So uh, 302 for all intent purposes is dead. We had, um, and, I, and I just put this in old business um, and open up to any commissioners if anybody has any uh, commission objectives that they would like to see us work on. And I just put that out. If there isn't any, I'll move on to number four. Hearing none. Um, as you know, it's customary for the Beach Commission and the Chairman to uh, make a, uh, a presentation to the selectmen uh, regarding our previous year's annual report. Uh, it's also been customary that we um, make that presentation um, shortly after the March elections, uh, assuming um, that we wanted to make the presentation to the sitting selectmen. Um, and by way of congratulations, uh, Mr. Griffin, congratulations on your uh, re-election. Um, so my plan will be uh, within the month of April to schedule a, uh, an appointment with the Board of Selectmen and just bring them up to date on everything that took place last year and for the first three months of this year. All commissioners are invited to attend. Um, I will send out the notice um, on when that appointment will take place. There is a, one other old business that I forgot to put in, um, and that was, if you recall, at our February 2nd meeting uh, under public comment, or I should say under appointments, 
uh, Mr. Charlie Preston um, came and spoke in uh, asking us uh, to support his idea of providing an exit out of the town of Hampton's parking lot on Ashworth Ave. Um, he went in quite to the detail, as you saw in the minutes, um, and um, the outcome of that discussion was this commission uh, voted to table uh, any type of support or not support of his, his idea. And it was tabling uh, with the idea that we would um, contact um, Parks and Rec, Diana Martin, to get her opinion. Uh, since she has 100% sole ownership of that parking lot and, and directs what goes and what doesn't go. Um, so um, I, I want to report back to the commission that I did have a meeting with Diana Martin uh, to discuss Charlie's idea. And her response back to me was that it is still being considered, but there's a lot of um, considerations that have to be done for that to happen. She had not had an opportunity to talk to Deputy uh, Chief Chief Sawyer uh, on his uh, reaction one way or the other. Uh, she did keep the door open that maybe we could try it, or she could try it in a pilot effort, maybe a couple of Wednesdays in the summer, uh, fireworks uh, night to see if it would, something like this would work. But uh, she had uh, asked for us to continue this topic as a tabled topic until she's prepared to <clears throat> make a decision and then she would uh, ask for you know our, our decision or our, our recommendation Rick I did um, sort of just was at one of the times I was talking to uh, Chief Solomon or you know uh, assistant uh, town manager there and he He's, he mentioned about Charlie's proposal, so he might be a person to approach. He, I, he, I remember hearing him say that he found some value in it, so he might be a good one to start with. Okay. He just happened to drop that. You know, I don't know if he's been thinking about it, but he did say that during our conversation. Okay. If I could just make one point. I, I think we should encourage Diana to do it. I think it might actually help people want to park there if they thought that they could park there and get off the beach quicker by going out that back way uh, so th I think that would be helpful secondly it would stop some of the cars from going up G Street and make it a left on the boulevard that area is pr pretty busy enough already uh, and any if we can take out whatever it is 20 50 100 cars uh, I think it'd be better G Street's a busy street that's the police street going up Anything we can do to alleviate traffic on that street is a good thing. So you're, you're in support of your, uh, Mr. Preston's uh, idea? Every once in a while we agree. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely see a lot of people parking in the Village District parking lot because they can get, get out of the beach. It makes it yeah. easy <clears throat> right up Brown Ave and get out. Um, onto, so I think it's a nighttime idea. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. It might it might not work as well during the day, but I think a pilot program at night for major concerts at the casino and, and fireworks night would definitely benefit. Okay. All right. What I what I would then recommend that we do is not take a motion one way or the other, but to pass along these recommendations to Diana and also touch base with Jamie Sullivan and others, um, but uh, continue to keep this subject on table. Um, but yet pass some um, comments that have been made tonight. Does that sound all right to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mr. Preston, if you're home watching this, um, you know that we are still uh, considering it. On the new business, um, both Fran and I attended um, a, uh, a board of directors meeting with the Rockingham Planning Commission on March 8th. Um, Cliff Senate had asked us to... Uh, update um, the uh, commission uh, along with the, uh, I, I guess you call it the uh, MPO, Fran? The MPO is, yeah, actually the, the group that's called the Metropolitan Planning Organization. That's the group that the federal transportation funds flow through. So they ultimately developed the 10-year plan uh, or, or the the TIP, the Transportation Improvement Plan, which then evolves into the 
state ten year plan. Okay. Well, both Fran and I were there, and um, they gave me an opportunity to speak in front of this uh, board, and um, so I just gave them a quick um, background, since some of them were new, on who we were, what we do. Uh, moved into the history of the transportation grant. Um, reminded them that they were part of the thought process uh, with regard to some of the things that we had uh, recommended at the end of last year. Um, and that um, that we would uh, keep them up to date uh, once we uh, move into uh, task order three. Um, so I assume that they were happy with our presentation. Fran, do you want to add anything to that? No, I, I think it was uh, an important aspect, especially as I say, the, the uh, federal funds need to flow through there. So it needs a two-way communication back and forth, and that's very helpful, I think. I did also mention since um, that any any proposals or letters of recommendation uh, or letters of request for money in the New Hampshire 10-year transportation starts through the Rockingham Planning Commission process. And um, if you recall, a couple of months ago, we had actually talked about it to consider um, uh, but then after further discussions with uh, Mr. Watson, uh, we decided that we were going to hold off and not put in any additional money uh, as a request for this year, uh, primarily because um, we were still waiting for the engineering design. Um, we felt comfortable knowing that we already had $8 million plus in the 10-year plan. Um, so we had opted out of putting in an application this year for any additional money. I mean, I think that was a wise move from our end uh, because we didn't really have anything to substantiate what we needed the money for. Whereas um, once we get our engineering design, uh, we will be able to really look at that as a continued financial resource along with the $8 million we already have or I use it um, as a um, um, some type of um, um, share uh, amount that we could go to the federal government uh, with when if we were to say, for example, apply for another Tiger grant and stuff. Um, so uh, that was that meeting. Um, staying with that for a minute, Bill, I'm wondering if maybe either in April or May. Um, you would be able to uh, make a, a presentation to the commission on what you see coming down the pike from federal government around transportation. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with, with our new president who says that he's going to spend billions and billions of dollars in infrastructure, I'm sure that there might be some money for Ocean Boulevard. Well, we've we've heard the same billions and billions dollars of comments version of that phrase. Uh, there is no more tiger under President Trump. And we haven't heard any more details as of yet, but hopefully by April or May we'll we'll learn something more. So the tiger the tiger organization, if you will, is, is no he, longer? He has eliminated that as part of his initial streamlining of federal government. But I'm assuming since you haven't called in panic, I'm assuming that any grants that now are within the Tiger focus still will... They're funded. Okay. Yeah. He, he hasn't unfunded anything that's been already awarded. Okay. He or anyone else. Okay. Um, the other thing that we might be able to provide some more info on by, by April or May is what's happening to the state budget process. Uh, Governor Sununu is looking at a number of different initiatives to bring more funding into the state, mostly to address local needs, um, and probably Ocean Boulevard, at least under what we've seen so far, would not qualify. Um, but things are changing every couple of days. Okay. Some of you might have heard, because we're on, on another board that I sit on, there is a um, um, a concept that a lot of states have used called the um, complete streets concept. 
um, and it's just more of a philosophy than anything else uh, where um, local organizations, uh, local towns and uh, governments uh, look at a particular area and, and try to, to design it in terms of um, what, a, what a complete street would look like, meaning you know, streets, lens, new sidewalks, handicapped sidewalks, um, all kinds of different things, and they call it um, complete streets. And it's more, once again, more of a concept. However, um, this year, there was a bill introduced, um, and I don't have the bill number in front of me, but there was a bill introduced that um, they would uh, like to take this conceptual idea and make it into a program with actual funding and um, looking at possibly setting up a pilot project or uh, projects plural and from the last I heard was that there's possibly 2.5 million um, that uh, might become available to local communities to submit in pilot projects um, so that's something I think we should just maybe keep in the back of our minds you know, for something like Ocean Boulevard. I mean, not to do, not to cover all of our costs, but once again, to add as another supporting uh, funding source. Is that, yeah. would that be fair? Absolutely. Okay. All right, I already mentioned the legislative discussion. Uh, and I'll continue to work on that to get everybody that we want here to be here. Um, during this past month, we also had a subcommittee of the Beach Commission um, that uh, looks at the land use guidelines. That committee is myself, Mr. Rage, and Mr. Preston. Uh, we had been requested by uh, Tom McGurk uh, to look at some architectural drawings uh, on a, a piece of property on 180 Ashworth Ave. Um, so the three of us met, and Mr. Preston indicated that he'd be willing to give us a quick update on, on that project. Well, we did a little bit of a walkabout down there, and um, I can tell you what, what is there. Uh, the condition is, is I, I think, deplorable. Didn't doesn't add any value to our beach, you know, as, as, as I see it. That's my personal opinion. I'm not going to speak for the others. Where's, where's 185? It's uh, Brownie's Motel. Okay. So, um, while we were down there, a couple of the neighbors came out just to inquire what we were doing and say hello, and they kind of substantiated what we said, what we thought as we looked at it, and some of the stories and the goings on there, you know, uh, really were the vision that we all have for Hampton Beach. Um, so if we take that building down and then we put up a nice new building that'll be 48 feet tall, it'll uh, be set back a little bit from the road, which will will actually give make the road look a little nicer and wider as we get down the street. It's going to increase the uh, town's tax base, more money coming off of Hampton Beach, um, you know, that goes to the town. Uh, so I think all in all, um, it was it was a good thing. It's uh, going to be all one bedrooms. So Those seem to be selling these these like personal clubhouses at the beach, I guess we can call them. Uh, I think it'll be a, bring a better clientele to uh, the restaurants and in the area. So I, I was in favor of it. Uh, I think it uh, continues a lot of the good things that are happening. They are going to allow them to rent them weekly, so um, they will have you know, we'll have some transit people coming in and out um, for us, which is important, I think. And there's 18 units there now, and there are going to be 18 more. And I don't think they have enough parking uh, for the 18 they have now, but there will be 18 parking spots. So they were granted the other day of the zoning the variance for our guest parking. So they will have 18 on-site parking. That's important. And just for the record, that after the uh, subcommittee met, uh, we then met and uh, recommended that we would support uh, this uh, project. And so I then sent a... Uh, a letter to the chair of the zoning board uh, indicating that the Beach Commission was in support of this uh, redevelopment project. Okay, thank you, Mr. Preston, Mr. Rage. Um, I had reached out earlier 
this week uh, to, to see if I could get on the agenda for tonight, uh, both with Mr. Welch and uh, Mr. Jacobs from Public Works, uh, to see if either one or both could be willing to come in um, and just talk to the commission and, as important, talk to the folks that watch us on TV um, regarding the sewer project uh, that was recently voted down by the town um, down on the beach. And uh, uh, Mr. Welch is out uh, today and tomorrow, so he couldn't make it. Mr. Jacobs asked that um, he be given a little bit more time before he'd have a chance to talk to both Mr. Welch and the Board of Selectmen uh, to, uh, and, and suggested that maybe in our April meeting that he come and just give an update on you know, where we are, what has to be done with the state, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I said fine, and that I'm, I was sure that if there was any updates that could be given right away, we have Mr. Griffin here. So, Rick, do you want to? <clears throat> yes. Um, well, one thing is that they definitely have multiple bids that are much lower. So there is going to be something you know, we're going to be working on to see how where this will go, especially. Uh, because I don't think anyone really realizes exactly what will happen with this, uh, the appeal that they have. Um, and I, from what I understand, the appeal is something that's kind of important because when Hampton does fix it, they want to fix it the way that they want to fix it. But from what I understand, um, there, and I know that there was even be, just before the election, there were people that we had somebody that. One, we had one person that was in contact that felt that they could definitely do it and at a much lower price. And we were concerned that, you know, would it be what we were looking for and there wasn't enough time to try to figure it out. But since then, from what I understand, there are three bids that have been submitted. One's a million point four cheaper and two of them are a million dollars cheaper. So, uh, it looks like you know there'll definitely be something that can be put together probably for for next year or whatever. But All right. there's plenty to work with, and we're going to be working on it. And I and I suspect that it's too early, and and so I'm not going to put you on the spot. But mm -hmm. I suspect that there probably will be some type of plan in place. Um, for if, God forbid, something does happen during the summer months? Well, they definitely have a plan. They've had that right from the beginning okay. when they did it. I mean, if something was to happen, they can um, meet, you know, it would come at a cost of like $120,000 or something, an emergency plan. Um, but, you know, this, these things do happen in other areas, and when something like this happened in Haverhill, they, there are whole companies that exist just to rent these supplies, so they're not a problem to get. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess in Haverhill, when they did it, it must have had to go through people's yards, so they just put these big tubes that went on and on through people's yards, and they don't, you know, they don't bother to get, they don't have to ask, they just do it. <laughs> and uh, so if something was to happen, we can handle it. But at least that's how it's been, un has, you know, it would cost a little bit more money. But there are some people out there that, the one person that wrote that I was reading the report, it was, uh, they think there's only a one in 10 chance that it can fail. So again, whose opinion's right? No one really knows. And we'll be certainly to invest, you know, investigating as much as we can. Okay. So, okay. So wait, just the one twenty-five wasn't that a, a weekly cost? I don't think it's a one fee. Or something. Wasn't that something? One hundred, one hundred twenty-five thousand. They would be trucking the stuff out or something. Is that no, it would be just to bypass it until they make the plans to fix it. You know, it would be that would be the charge. I, I, I just remember hearing it. Yeah. I heard a weekly thing, yeah. yeah. That's what we were... No, I don't think that that's it. That's not how I understand it. Okay. That sounds better than that. 
Yeah. I mean, it would, it would, yeah, it would take a week. But guess what? It would take a week to get the uh, the tubes that they haven't. No, but for. I thought it was the cost. The cost was so week. much, like a week, a hundred thousand a week or a month, because they had to them. truck the stuff in and out. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think it's a problem. Well, let's hope not. <laughs> and you know, they if you if you paid attention um, as it went along. The Chris Jacobs presentation changed quite a bit from the beginning to the end. Okay. And he was the one that came in and brought up about these three bits at the end of the meeting the other day. Great. Well, I think we're pretty lucky to have him in there. Uh, they do a great job. Mm -hmm. so, there's a way to do it and figure it out. I think the, the they were in there today working on the million dollar one with Aquarian Water and. Uh, um, you know, Chris and I noticed the, you know, Jen, she was there and Regina was there. Right. Okay. That is it for uh, new business for me. I know Mr. Rage wants to bring up one item for, under new business. and So tomorrow night is the annual village district meeting. It's voting from one o'clock to seven. You can register that day. You have to be a member of the village district, a resident of the village district. Um, and then at 7 o'clock, our annual meeting starts, and we will vote on the budget and any other new business that people want to bring up. You can register that day, but the meeting will start at 7 o'clock. Everybody is welcome, whether you're a resident or not. We'll, allow, we'll usually take a vote to allow people to speak. But the only people that can vote are residents, not property owners, residents of the village district. Okay. That was it. Okay. Any questions? Did I miss anything, Paul? I would just say that we are an open town meeting form of government, not an SB2. So in order to vote tomorrow, you have to come to the meeting, listen to the presentation, and then vote. Unlike just going and voting, but not being the de it's like the deliberative session and the vote wrapped into the same package. Do you have anything controversial? No, not this year. Well, he's not that we're aware of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other new business? This could be a record. I got a comment though. Oh. It was uh, St. Patrick's Day is very big holiday for the Irish Americans, right? March 25th is Greek Independence Day, so the Greek Americans celebrate that. So it's something to think about. It is a big, big day, so I'm just saying, you know. Okay. So happy Greek Independence Day. <laughs> to, to be fair to anybody else on this commission that comes from another uh, ethnic group, is there anything else anybody else would like to uh, talk about? Alrighty. I don't have any other new business. I'll entertain a, a motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Mann, second by Mr. Hausman. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Meeting closed. Channel 22. Thank you very much.